Hello knitters, welcome back to another video and today we're looking into the one and only sock, the pattern that I drew up and we're looking at how to knit the heel. So this is a sock that I have already knitted and we'll look into the heel. You can see that the self-striping yarn has gone a bit funny over this heel um, so you can try and ignore that uh, unfortunately but you can see that the heel is actually really quite neat. It's a really easy heel to knit as well. There's no gusset, you don't have to pick up stitches. This is knitted all in one go when you're on the needles. And it's really nice and clean as well. So we're gonna follow up knitting stitches to the edge of the heel, I guess, to the top of the heel. And then we flip it over and then we work back reintroducing the stitches back until we're working fully in the round for the rest of the sock. So it's really neat. That's both sides and we'll look into the side as well. So you can see there, it's very even and it's worked with double and triple stitches. Basically, we're gonna be splitting the working area into three. So we're gonna have two sections on either side and the middle section, which we're not gonna be shaping. And we're gonna shape the two sections on either side by decreasing the amount of stitches that we work with. So this is the socks that I'm working with at the minute. I have split it in half, so I've got stitches on the front and on the back. I'm gonna be working on the front needle here, and I'm gonna split this into three. So I've got two sections on either side, so I'm just counting the stitches here. I have got 20 stitches, which I'm gonna split into three. I will have a different number in the middle, but that is okay, as long as I've got an even number of stitches on the right and the left-hand side of that middle section, because those are the areas that I'm gonna be working with to decrease. The middle I will leave as it is, so that's kind of like the flat bit of the heel. So I'm gonna work across for the first row of this um, to the end stitch, I'm then gonna work with that. I'm gonna flip it over, as you kind of saw there, work back and purl to the end stitch, work with that, and just kind of repeating by turning the work, working with both stocking net stitch and purl stitches as well. So this first row, which I've already started working with, I'm just gonna knit all the way along to the very end stitch, exactly as I have just been doing before. I have just decided where I'm gonna put the heel. I've decided the length of the leg of the sock. And then I can just get insert the sock at that point. So it doesn't matter how long your sock is, you can insert this heel at any point. And for this, say it's the first row, I'm gonna knit all the way along to the end stitch. Now I'm gonna make a double stitch of this. So I'm gonna come into that second stitch down, the stitch which is below the stitch, and I'm gonna pick that up and put that onto my working left needle. So I've got two stitches on that working left needle. I haven't knitted the very last stitch. I've hooked up the stitch below and rehung that. I'm going to knit into that stitch exactly like any other normal stitch and then replace it back on the left hand needle. So I have got two stitches essentially coming from that stitch below. So you can see there, that is my first double stitch that I have made. So I will now turn and I'm going to purl all the way back. I gave it a little bit of a tug just to make sure that that last stitch was nice and tight. And I'm gonna purl all the way back. So I purl English style and I knit continental. It's a bit of a weird one. Um, which is why if you're used to one technique but haven't seen the other, it might be a bit confusing. But don't worry about that, this is just how I knit. So I'm gonna purl all the way back to the very end stitch of this half. As you know, I've split my stitches in half. Get to that last stitch, but this is a little bit different. I'm gonna slip that stitch over and pick up the stitch below. So it's the heel of the stitch below. I'm just gonna pick that back up with the left needle and purl into that one. So I, again, have two stitches coming from that one stitch below. That is a double stitch that I have made. So you can see there. I'm then gonna slip both of those stitches from that one stitch back over onto my left hand needle and keep them there whilst I turn and knit back. So I have already now done the first shaping row of my sock. It's really that simple. So I'm gonna come all the way back again, knitting this row to the last knit stitch. I'm gonna ignore the double stitch, which I made on the first time that I made this, this knit row. I'll just sort that stitch out. 
rehang it and re knit it. So all the way back to now the stitch before the double stitch. So oh, I went one too far. So you can see I've got the double stitch, and then this is the stitch before. So exactly the same, I'm gonna make a double stitch with this. Bring up the stitch below and rehang that onto the left hand needle and knit into that exactly like you would any other normal stitch. And you've then got two stitches coming from one stitch. That is now two double stitches I have made. Exactly the same turn with those two double stitches on the right hand side and purl back across. It's funny, some people think, were wondering what I was doing once when I was knitting English style in a European country. They didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, oh, I'm, I'm purling. I'm like, that's not purling. And it's just because I purl differently to apparently the European continent where they use continental knitting. So purling back to the stitch before the double stitch, there is the double stitch and this is the stitch I'm gonna work into. And exactly the same, slip that stitch over to the right hand needle, pick up the stitch below and purl into that loop that you have just picked up. That makes a double stitch. And then I'm gonna slip that double stitch back over onto the left hand needle before I turn and repeat with a knit row. So I'll go through this and show you one more time. So you can see I've got two double stitches and I'm just gonna knit this row. I'll show you one more time on both the knit and the purl row and then I will speed it up a little bit because I don't think you want to just sit and watch me knit all the way across. So here we go. I've got to the last stitch before the double, find the stitch below, rehang it, just open it up a little. It does get a little bit hard to get that needle in, but just make sure you keep them apart, those two stitches apart. Knit into it exact, exactly like any other stitch and then slip that knitted stitch back over onto the left hand needle before turning the work and purling back across to do exactly the same. So you can see that we're starting to decrease the amount of stitches that we're working with because we're creating double stitches, but we're not using those totally. We're leaving them be once we've created the double stitch. And then the stitches in the middle are getting less and less. So the purl stitch, slip it over to the right hand needle, pick up the heel of the stitch below and purl into it. And then slip those that double stitch back over. So just continue working back and forth the knit and the purl rows, um, just working with the stitches to create double stitches on either side. Remember that you have split your work up into three as well. So this bit here, I'll just go through. I'm just checking and counting my stitches here because I had 20 stitches on this one part that I'm working with and I split that into three. So I had two sections of six stitches on either side and a section of eight stitches in the middle. I could have split that into two sections of seven stitches, seven on either side, and then a section of the remainder in the middle, which will be six stitches. Sorry, quick maths. Um, but I didn't because I thought the heel then might be able to get, might become a little bit pointy. It will still work. It still won't really matter. It will still do exactly the same. Um, and you can do this with any number of need, uh, any number of stitches as well. So if you've got 40 stitches on that one side, you can split that into three. If you've got less than I currently have, so say you've got 16 stitches, you can also split that into three. As long as the two side sections have got the same number of stitches and the middle section potentially has one or more stitch than the two sides, it will still work and everything will still knit exactly as I've described and your sock will still come out exactly like the sock heel that has been described in the pattern that I have made. So I think this is the last double stitch and I am at the halfway point. So I've got six, one, two, three, four, five and six. And then I have five, six, and I've counted that twice. And then I have my eight stitches in the middle. So if I get the sock that I knitted already, you can see that the middle section, so there on either side is the six, section, six stitches, 
on either side and that middle bit is the bit that I have got to here. So I'm not going to be shaping that, I'm just going to continue knitting. So now we've done one side and we've shaped it, we are essentially going to do the second part of the heel and we're going to reintroduce stitches as we go and we do this by making triple stitches. So I'll show you this first reintroduction, I guess you could say. I'm going to knit along to my first double stitch that we have here. So I just need to knit one more and this is the first double stitch. I'm going to knit these two loops together. So I'm kind of treating it like I'm knitting two, two together. It's not two stitches because they come from one stitch, but I'm going to knit those together. And then in this next double stitch, I'm going to make a triple stitch. And I do that in exactly the same way that I made a double stitch by picking up the loop below, rehanging it and knitting into that. So you can see I've got that loop and I've got three stitches coming from it. So I've made a triple stitch and I do exactly the same on the purl. So I turn, give it a little tug when I've, after I've done that first purl stitch and purl all the way along to that first double stitch that I have. One more. So this is it. So exactly the same. I'm going to purl those two loops together and then make a triple stitch exactly the same way. So slipping that double stitch over, picking up the loop below, purling into it to make a triple stitch. And then you can turn. I know that was a little bit fast, but it is exactly the same method that I have just been doing to make those double stitches. I'm just putting one more loop into it to make a triple stitch. So again, knit all the way along. So I've now introduced an extra stitch. Once I get to, so this is the last stitch, and then once I get to this triple stitch, I will knit all three of those loops together, all as one. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So you knit all three loops of that triple stitch together, and then you create a triple stitch from this double stitch. So rehang up that loop of the stitch below and knit into it, and then slide that stitch back over. And I've got a triple stitch, so three stitches coming from one stitch, then I will turn and purl across this next row. So same again, my stitches are starting to increase the amount that I'm working with because each time I'm re reintroducing one stitch back into either the, the knit or purl row. So I get to that triple stitch knit all three of those loops together before taking it off and then create a triple stitch. So slip the double over, pick up the loop from the, from the stitch below, purl into it, you've made a triple stitch and then slip that triple stitch back across. And I repeat that so you can already start to see that that heel is starting to form and I'm getting that bit of a bulge of knit because I'm kind of creating extra fabric in one area rather than around the whole sock. And it is that that makes the heel of the sock. There's my yarn. I don't quite know why I decided to show you that. Maybe because it's self-striping yarn that I got from Sweden before I came back. The last stitch that I knit before the triple or the double always becomes a little bit hard to find. So really just make sure that you are knitting the right stitch. And that triple can also be, as you can see, I'm having quite a bit of difficulty with this one. So knit all of it together and then create a triple stitch from the double slip stitch over and I've got the triple stitch before turning. I need to find some way how to uh, how to keep my yarn in a nice place rather than jumping around all over the screen. If you've got any suggestions stick them in the comments below because I'm going to be doing more hand knitting videos I hope in the future so I kind of want it to look professional but I wasn't quite sure to have my yarn there. It's quite nice to have the yarn in the picture so let me know about that. This might also be a good time to, dare I say it, those three words. Like, comment and subscribe. So if you want to see more content like this I will be bringing out some more videos along with some machine knitting videos as well and techniques that I'll be doing. I do have a Patreon that you can subscribe to where I have written techniques um, as well as more information on knitting and I try and kind of 
see what's going on in the industry and write about that as well. So I have a Patreon that you can subscribe to. Um, I am most active on Instagram as well, so you can give me a follow there if you would like. So that boring bit is over. If you're still with us, thanks for persevering through all of that rubbish that I was chatting about. Um, but us small business owners, eh, we've got to kind of try and promote our work someplace. And I guess a shout out whilst we're doing a knitting video might just help those statistics. Yay. So I have sped this up so we can actually get back to the matter at hand, which is knitting a sock heel. I'm just finishing off the last little bits of shaping of the of the heel, um, but I have sped it up. So if you do need to go back and kind of just see the process, just skip back a couple of minutes. I'll try and put a little point on the video on, on YouTube to show where I go through it to begin with. But once you get into the swing of it, it is one of those that you don't need any stitch markers. You don't really need to kind of follow where you're going because the stitches do that for you. You can see exactly what point you're at through just the double and triple stitches. So you can kind of see, especially when you're reworking and reintroducing the stitches, exactly what you need to do to that last stitch because it's it ends up being really obvious, which is a nice one. You don't need to, yeah, it's, it's a very quick heel. I find that I can do this just sitting in front of the TV and half the time I'm not even thinking about it. So hopefully you guys can get to that same sort of place and work with it on every single sock that you, you work with. So we are here. The heel is done. You can see it's sitting already nice and flat and both sides are looking really neat as well. And that's the second side there. So I'm actually really happy with this sock. I do have a couple of shapings left to go, but you can see I'm back to pretty much all knit stitches and I'm gonna incorporate the rest of the stitches by knitting now just back in the round. You can see on my right hand needle that I do have one triple stitch to go, um, but I'm just gonna flip that round to the other side just for the time being. I'm gonna forget about it because now I'm just gonna knit. If I were to knit, all knit this section, turn and come back again and purl, I would end up with a little hole. It wouldn't be like a, a dropped stitch hole where it would ladder. It would just be a little hole at the side of the foot and it's, I don't want that and I can avoid it so I will avoid it. And I'm just gonna do that by knitting this first half of the sock, just as normal, exactly as I normally would. I will get to that very end triple stitch. Oh, I had a twisted stitch there, I just rehung that. So, oh no, I totally lied, that part was, was the triple stitch. So I've got my triple stitch and I'm gonna knit all of these loops as one. So knit them all as one for the very last time on this side. Come on, it's the last time we can do this. They are looking a bit stretched, but don't worry. They do even themselves out. I'm then going to continue with the magic loop method that I have been working with and I'm now going to reintroduce the stitches on the back side which I have totally forgotten about. Well technically it's the front side of the foot, it's on top of your, it's on top of your foot. And then knit these, I'll just give that a nice little tug to make sure that stitch is nice and tight. Knitting across the other side which I have neglected for the past 15 minutes all the way across and you will notice that I will get to that very last triple stitch that I had and just same again knit into all of those three loops nothing special no turning no going back and purling knitting into it exactly as you would and I now have all of my stitches back as knit stitches there is my heel nicely done and shaped and I'm ready to continue on with the foot that is it, it's really, really simple. Let me know how it goes. Um, you've got the instructions as well if you bought the pattern, so I hope it goes well for you. If you've got any comments about this heel, then just drop them in the comment box below and I will try and get back to you. So you can see here I'm gonna continue on and then knit the toe. But it's really simple, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you make fabulous socks from this. It's a really simple method, give it a go and let me know what you think. Oh, it is nice, isn't it? 
Wonderful. Happy knitting, guys.